Hello and welcome back to Inside EVs. I'm Tom Malogany and today we're going to take a look at the infotainment system on the 2021 Mustang Mach-E. Cars in general, not just electric cars, are really turning into computers on wheels and the infotainment systems are like the center hub for the whole driving experience. We're going to go over the settings and the features in Ford's new sync system on the Mustang Mach-E. There's tons of screens, so many different options. You can mess with your advanced driver assistance systems. Of course, the radio, your Bluetooth, your Android Auto, the Wi-Fi hotspot. There's so many different features that this thing has. We're going to try to cover all of it, but I don't even know if we're going to get it all in because the vehicle has so many different features and options. So let's jump inside the vehicle and take a look at what Ford put out for the Mustang Mach-E. Before we do that, don't forget, Click the subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on Inside EVs. All right, so I'm here inside the Mustang Mach-E. Let's take a look at this Ford Sync 4 system. Um, there's a lot to go over. Quite honestly, I don't even think I've gotten to everything yet. There's so much in this Sync system. Um, and I've only had the car for a couple of days. Uh, so let's take a look at it and see how the system works. See, we're on the basic screen right now. There's really no set home screen, but uh, most people leave the navigation up as the home screen. This is the car's built-in navigation. Now, of course, there's also Android Auto uh, and Apple CarPlay, but we have it set up with just the car's basic navigation system here. Um, let's touch this icon of a Maki up in the upper left hand corner you could see we have the controls have come up the first thing on the top is drive modes you can see there's three different drive modes here engage that's kind of like uh, a normal drive mode if you want to say it's in the middle of whisper and unbridled it's kind of uh not all the power and uh and 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 say you know very responsive steering that old uh, unbridled might have uh, but it's also not quiet and um, set up for a, the smoothest, quietest drive like Whisper has. Uh, so engage, let's see what, what how Ford describes it. Balanced drive, fun and engaging. Okay, the Whisper driving mode uh, is in the middle. Now, if you notice in the background, you might not be able to see it. It almost looks like there's waves going on in the background of that. When you press Whisper, you also get that same type of wavy, soothing appearance in the driver's display. It's very light. It's, it's hard to see, but it's there. It's in the background. And what do we call Whisper? Seamless drive, quiet, and calm. Okay. Now, unbridled, that's your sportiest driving mode. Um, that's when you get the most power, the, the quickest response when you touch the pedal. Uh, and you'll notice it has these like orange lines. Uh, you also get them on the top two corners of the driver's display. And as you accelerate, the harder you accelerate, the lines get brighter and longer. Kind of gives you a little bit of feedback that you're uh, driving uh, sporty. Let's take a look at what we say here. Exhilarating drive, machine and road align as one. I can kind of uh, agree with that. I've driven this for a couple days now, and the Mach-E definitely has a great driving experience. Definitely so far, so good. Really pleased with it. Take a look at these additional settings here. One pedal driving, I have that turned on. I think that's something that a lot of electric vehicle enthusiasts really like. Uh, you can obviously turn that off if you don't want it. Uh, I recommend leaving it on. With one pedal driving, you really don't need to use the brake pedal that often. The regenerative braking is fairly aggressive, and with the one pedal driving, the vehicle will come to a complete stop and stop by itself uh, without you touching the friction brake. This auto ambient light selection, when that's turned on as it is now, uh, the car changes the ambient lights depending on the drive mode you have. Um, I actually had this off most of the time that I was uh, driving the car because I set the ambient light that I wanted it and it remained on that color. Um, we're going to get into that a little bit later. It's in the other settings. Um, but when you leave it set here, the light, the light will change depending on uh, which drive mode you have it on. The, co the colors will change. The propulsion sound, that's something, let me see how Ford describes this, is generated to enhance the driving experience. The sound level is mode dependent. 
Whisper is minimum obvious. I didn't even hear it in whisper mode. I thought there was no sound in whisper mode. Engage and then unbridled is maximum. You do get kind of a rumble that they pipe into the vehicle um, when you're uh, when you have the propulsion sound turned on. I really don't need that in my electric vehicles. I I think that uh, I love the the calm silence uh, combined with the instant torque and the great performance. But some people like that. It's this isn't the only electric vehicle. Porsche has it on the Taycan. There's other vehicles that have this artificial sound piped in. Um, so that's if you want the sound, there you go. You put it. If you don't want it, super simple. Just turn it off. All right. Let's take a look at the cameras. We've got an overhead view, like a bird's eye view, 360 degrees. We're here inside the garage, uh, and you can see all around the vehicle, which is really useful. And then there's also a couple different camera views. If you press this up here. You'll see the front of the vehicle kind of has a 180 degree view. It kind of bent the room that we're in the garage. Um, and you can see a further on each side of the vehicle. That's the regular straight on view. And when we press this, it's where we showed before with the, um, the, the bird's eye view. Now, if you want, you can tag the vehicle and you can look at the different corners. You can see how close you are on that corner or say, oh, geez, the front over here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty close to that little cart I have over there. Um, and uh, that's good. It lets you zoom in on that, which is really useful. This switch here, this is the um, alert when you're getting close to something, the sensors beep um, loudly. And some people uh, find that annoying so that you, you can turn it off. Uh, I like to have it on. It warns me if I'm getting too close to something. The only time I do turn it off is when I go to the car wash, because as, as if you've ever come through a car wash with a vehicle that has that, um, what you get is these just, it just constantly goes nuts the whole time you're going through the car wash. Not that I really recommend car washes. I like to hand wash my vehicles, but there are times in the winter where it's too cold. Got to get the salt off it. Uh, and I have to admit, I've, I've, I've succumbed and taken my car to car washes. Um, but I like to leave that on because I think it's safer to have that on all the time. Uh, okay, let's go out next. Where are we at now? Um, okay, parking. Okay, so the car does have automatic parking features. I haven't used that yet. Um, I, to be honest with you, I never use automatic parking features. I, I feel like I can park the car quicker than, than what they can. My BMW i3 had it. I tried it once. I got frustrated because it took so long to get in the space. It got in the spot. It worked, but it takes so long. It's like, okay, I could do this much quicker. But this does have it. Um, you'd activate it, and then there's a button on the center of the console. Once it finds the spot, um, you, you press the button, and it will... Um, you have to hold the button and then it parks and this can parallel park or it can back into a parking space, say in a, in a parking lot, like a shopping mall or shopping center. It finds a space that has enough room and it lets you know that there's enough room. And then you press this, you put it in neutral, you press the P and you hold it until it parks in the spot. Uh, I've seen demonstrations of it working fine. Um, if you want to use it, go right ahead. That's where it is. Uh, access. Let's take a look at this here. Uh, okay, so this would be, there's a charge port light. You can turn that off if you'd, if you'd like to. I don't know why anybody would. I prefer to leave it on. Uh, and then there's this unlock charge cord. That's if you need to unlock your charge cord while the vehicle, I think the vehicle has to be on, allows the charge cord to be unlocked only when the cord is connected and the vehicle is running. Okay, so that, that the, the, the charge cord isn't locked to the vehicle. You want to release it. You can press the button there. Um, okay, another cool feature down here is the rear hatch. You can open it from the inside. And notice when I open it from the inside, you see the visual? You see the hatch opening up. Pretty cool. And it is opening up. Let me close it down now. Close it. Makes a, gives you a little warning that the thing's going down and closed. So, okay, let's take a look at driver assistance. Um, okay, so you want to have your auto hold. I love having auto hold on. That's how they describe it. Holds the vehicle stationary after you come to a stop. Right, hold is released when you press the accelerator pedal, pedal exactly. Um, that's that's pretty standard. A lot of vehicles have that. Traction control, if you want to turn off the traction control, there's times when, when you do want to. You do that right here in the driver assistance. Valet mode. Valet mode's pretty cool. Um, let's say you don't want the valet driver to have any access to your, um, to any of your controls in here. You could, you could set it, you set a four digit pen. Let's say, you know, what we do, um, um, one, two, three, four, done. Do it again. Two, three, four, done. So now the screen's locked. Now when the valet's in your car, they can't access any of your, your information. They can't mess with your settings. They can't play the radio. 
Um, and to obviously, when you, you get back in the car, two, three, four, enter. But I'd probably recommend you not using one, two, three, four, <laughs> because the, the uh, valet is probably going to want to uh, make a guess or two. You know, they're probably um, uh, curious about what, what your code was. Um, so that was valet mode here. Okay, next we're going to look at settings. Okay, on the top is sound pretty straightforward, your balance and your fader, um, the, the fade, the tone settings. You could move this so that it, it centers where you're sitting. Let's say you're the only one in the vehicle. If you want to change it, you could reset it to there. Um, you know, it has down below here. Oh yeah, the um, speed compensated volume. So that allows you to, um, I have it turned off. The faster you go, the vehicle will sense what the, uh, the volume of, I guess, noise is and will uh, will up will make the set the your music louder and you could set it here to different levels here low medium high um and uh and that's you know I, the monkey's pretty quiet at at highway speeds i i don't know if you really necessarily need that i could see that more in an internal combustion engine vehicle where you know the faster you go you hear the engine and everything this this car's pretty quiet uh, as it is, you do get some wind noise because it's, you know, it's, it isn't a crossover type vehicle. It's not a, a, a low slung, super aerodynamic vehicle. So there is some wind noise when you go fast on the highway. We completed the uh, 70 mile an hour highway range test recently with this. At 70 miles an hour, there was a fair amount of noise, not any more than the average electric vehicle, but you do get some wind noise. And then down here on the bottom is the surround sound. Let me see. You could do surround or stereo. Okay. So that's set up your radio the way you prefer it to be set up next here is the phone list this is where you would add a phone um i guess you this is no no devices i don't have anything paired right now but that's where you would do it pretty straight straightforward i actually did a couple devices and then removed them um simple as as you know it sends out the code you 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 match the numbers you sync it and then you go on from there so let's go back to this here. Okay, phone list. Charge. Okay, so right now, this is this screen tells you your, your state of charge and a rough estimate of how many miles you can go. It says we're at 92% charged and that we can go about 251 miles. I do have some uh, um, uh, charging scheduled. Uh, I did that setting that up before. We're going to go over that a little bit later. So it shows it right here, what time the car is going to, it's going to start charging uh, at midnight tonight, which is 12 a.m. Friday, and it'll be finished charging in at 1.42. So it's saying that it needs an hour and 42 minutes to get that last 8%. That's not unusual. Um, I mean, the Mustang Mach-E can charge at 11 kilowatts, so it does really well with AC charging. Uh, it charges really quickly if, if you have a uh, a, a, a powerful charger at home. Um, but you know, that last, not, this is the, that last 8% takes longer than probably 25% charging because the cells are balancing and the, the last part of the charge always takes a, a super long time. It'll probably be at like 98%, you know, in, in four, in 30 minutes. And then the rest of the time, it's just gradually balancing those cells. Um, and then I also have a depart, a departure time set, which we're going to go over later. A matter of fact, that's right down here. Um, you can set your schedule charging if you want to say, um, uh, a schedule the charging because you have a time of use plan that this is where you do it in here. I have it set up for weekdays, not to charge until midnight or 12 AM, um, uh, because the, uh, electricity rates are, are less than, uh, and on weekends, I was just playing with it and set it at 6 PM, uh, at, uh, 8 PM. You don't, the, the, you know, you, most of the time, um, the, Time of use is going to be set for the same time, but different utilities have different rules, and and uh, and you want to make sure if you do have a time of use plan, the one of the first things you do when you get your Maki -E is set that up in here so that you're you're saving money and you're charging the most efficient way. Um, departure and comfort. This is to precondition your your Maki. -E. Uh, I have it set here to uh, start charging at or to depart at 7 a.m. on Monday. You'd pr pretty much want to set that for all the days in the morning. Um, and the way you set it is, let's say we'll do a Tuesday here. Um, Tuesday, let's say we're going to leave eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, we'll scroll up to eight o'clock in the morning and you'll see the a.m. Let's say I wanted to warm the vehicle, right? I don't want to cool it. Let's say this is in the winter. Um, I hit save. 
Now I also say, hey, um, I leave work at five o'clock. I want my car nice and warm for me when I get out of my when I get out of work. So you scroll this up here to five p.m. Warm again. Uh, okay. Oh, I didn't select that. You have to select where you want to do it first, uh, and then five o'clock. Oops. P.m. I want to warm. Save, and it's updated. So now you can see that. Now, one thing I will mention about that is in the morning, my the vehicle would be plugged in. So I'll leave with a fully charged car, 100% charged, nice warm cabin, and that'll extend your range in the winter. But at night when I come out of my job and I have it preconditioned, it's probably parked in a parking lot somewhere. It's not plugged in. So it's warming up the car using the energy stored in your battery. So while you have a nice warm car, that's not the best for range. But in the winter, if you live in a cold weather month, you, uh, cold weather areas, you definitely want to use this preconditioning feature. It's going to extend your range, and plus you get into a nice warm car in the morning. All right, let's go back to, oops, where were we now? Settings, um, we were in charge, right? Yeah, we are in charge. Okay, nothing else is below that? Nope. Okay personal profiles. This is where you set up your personal profiles. Um, the, the Mustang Mach-E only comes with one key fob. That's because you can use your phone as a key fob. Um, but you're, you're allowed to set up to, I'm pretty sure it's three different profiles. And um, you have uh, the settings uh, on the door panel so we can uh, set your uh, mirrors and seat to your setting. But if you program it to the key fob, uh, when you get in the car, it'll automatically um, uh, set your mirrors and your seat and whatever other settings you have set up to match your profile. So, uh, you know, that's something that's a really good convenience feature, but you do have to um, link it to the uh, to, to the key fob. You can link it to your phone. Also, if you're using your phone, um, you have to create a profile and you walk. I'm not going to walk through all that right now, but um, this is where you would set that up. And it's definitely a convenient feature. Driver assistance. The Mustang Mach-E has a lot of driver assistance systems. And I actually was using the adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assistant. Actually worked really well. I was super happy with it. Um, definitely is a, one of the better systems that I've used. This is where you're going to set all of your different um, driver assistance systems. Uh, um, you can uh, set the, okay, the cruise control. There's three different kinds of cruise control. You've got normal cruise control, which just sets... The vehicle to um all right let me turn that off uh when you sit in the vehicle for a little while that was the vehicle telling me it was it's going to turn off um you know it, it it thinks that nobody's in the car and i forgot to turn it off so it's it's turning the vehicle off you press the brake and then it'll it, it stops doing that so here's the driver assistance you've got normal cruise control i don't know why anybody would want normal cruise control anymore that's like so 1980s <laughs> but the adaptive cruise control i really like um, and that will, um, you know, obviously it'll keep you a safe distance from the car in front of you. You could set a maximum speed and, um, you know, that works really well, but the intelligent cruise control is kind of cool. What that does is it adjusts your v your speed, uh, according to the speed limit. So if you're, if you're, if you're driving on a road that has a 50 mile an hour speed limit, and then it suddenly drops down to 40 miles an hour and you're not kind of paying attention. I mean, you should always be paying attention, but let's face it. Sometimes we don't. You're not going to be blasted by a, a police officer and, and get a ticket. The car will slow down for you. But it also lets you set tolerance right here. You can set how many miles an hour above or below you want the vehicle to drive to the speed. So let's say you say, you know, I feel comfortable driving eight miles an hour over the speed limit. I don't think I think it's safe and I don't think I'm going to get a ticket. You'd set it at that. And then um, the, the Mach-E will, will drive at, uh, the most it'll go is eight miles an hour over the speed limit with the intelligent cruise control set. If you have the adaptive cruise control set, I mean, you could set that to whatever you want and, and, and it will, um, you know, it'll obey your, your settings. But the intelligent cruise control kind of keeps you honest. Um, let's take a look down here. We've got the speed limit assist. I told you there are so many settings with, with, uh, with this. Uh, the speed limit warning. Uh, what that does is there's a, uh, a little icon with your speed limit to the right of your speedometer, and it starts blinking if you're going faster than the speed limit. 
I thought there was an audible warning, but I couldn't get it to come up. Let me see. Alerts you when the vehicle exceeds postal speed and sets tolerance. Yeah, I don't think it's an audible warning. I couldn't get it to make the audible warning unless uh, it was it's turned off somewhere. But what happens is the the little uh, there's like a little icon that looks like a speedometer. It starts uh, looks like a, a speed limit sign. It starts blinking when you exceed the speed limit. Uh, we did the tolerance. The lane keeping assistant, that works really well. You can adjust it um, so that you either just get an alert or, or uh, let me see. Yeah, um, the alert means it gives you an audible alert. The aid means if you're drifting from your lane, um, it will turn you back into your lane. And then, of course, aid and alert means it does both. Um, and the lane keeping assistant here, um, the intensity, you can set it to either be high, low, or, or, or normal. All right pre-collision assist let me see what this is this is the distance indication automatic energy uh, emergency braking you want all that stuff turned on i think evasive steering that's something that some people aren't always 100 percent comfortable with they don't want the vehicle to, to automatically steer but listen your hands are on the steering wheel if you don't like what it's doing you can always overrule it it doesn't turn that powerfully that that you can't over over you know re retain control of the vehicle um, and you can set the alert sensitivity. Um, the rear camera delay, if you set the rear camera to delay, what happens is you put the vehicle in reverse, right? And you're backing up. And then when you put it in drive, most camera systems shut off immediately. And then, you know, you're on your main screen. If you set it to delay, even if you put it in drive and you begin driving away for the first maybe 10 seconds, let me see how long it does. It doesn't say. Um, but for, for, for a short period of time, the rear camera stays on the screen here. Um, you know, I, I think it's somewhere around five to 10 seconds. It's, it stays on. And, uh, and some people just like to look at where they're, you know, what was behind them as they're pulling away. And it only stays on for a few seconds and then it goes away. Um, blind spot information system. Of course, you know, this is great. There's a little icon on the two side view mirrors. Um, I highly recommend leaving that on. It works really good when I was driving uh, up and down the, the New Jersey Turnpike on, a, on the range test. Um, I, I was using that all the time and uh, really, really works good. Um, these safety features are really absolutely, you know, invaluable. Um, okay, let's take a look. Cross traffic alert. That's if um, it alerts you for vehicles coming from your side. Let's say you're in a parking lot and you're backing up and a vehicle is coming uh, towards you, uh, you'll get an alert. The reverse brake assist, what that'll do is if you're backing up and it senses an obstacle, it will automatically brake. Super good to have that on. Someone's walking with a shopping cart behind you. You don't see them. They're in a blind spot. Uh, th this, this if, if it's functioning properly, it will stop and, won't, and you, know, you won't uh, hit somebody. Uh, the driver alert here is notifies you if, oh, if you're in it, in attentive. I didn't know what that was. Um, okay, so the, there is a monitoring system here that monitors the driver. Now, eventually this system, um, the driving assist system is going to be a hands-free system. It isn't just yet, uh, but it alerts, it monitors your driving to make sure you're alert. It gives you a warning if you don't seem like you're allowed. I've been in that in other vehicles too, where like a, a cup of coffee icon comes up on the screen because it's like, okay, it looks like you're not being alert. We suggest you maybe get a cup of coffee or something. And that kind of wakes you up and saying, okay, if it's sensing something, I must not be as alert as I should be. Um, the auto hold, that's obviously, um, it, it's, we talked about that before, it continues to hold vehicle after you've come to a spot, after you've come to a stop, traction control, um, that was in the other section too. There is some redundancy. Uh, some of the features are in two different sections in the vehicle. Uh, let's take a look at vehicle here. Okay, so we've got a lot in here. <laughs> oh, I tell you, these systems have so many features. It's crazy. Um, you need to own it for a couple of weeks before you really have everything down pat. I'm trying to um, get everything in a couple of days here so I can show you guys. Um, so vehicle power down timer, I told you about that before. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn that off now because it did it twice while I'm doing this video. Um, what happens is, let's see how they describe it, automatically turns off the vehicle after 30 minutes uh, if it's left unattended. Uh, I'm sitting in it, but it's, I guess, because I'm not doing anything, um, it, it's trying to power the vehicle off. Rear occupant alert, that's pretty good. Um, that, uh, if you have that turned on, uh, when you turn the vehicle off, you get a warning to check the back seat. Now that's obviously, 
uh, in response to sometimes people will have a child in the back seat and they're, you know, life's busy, you know, crazy and you forget. And there's been cases, unfortunately, where people have left their kids in their car uh, and uh, bad things can happen when that happens. So this kind of alerts you that, hey, there's something in the back seat um, and uh, you better check before you leave. So that that's definitely if you have kids, if you have a child seat, um, uh, that's something that you definitely want to tick on um, the easy entry and exit. That's self-explanatory. When you, when you turn the vehicle off, the seat backs out, the steering wheel lifts up so you can get in and out easy. When you get back into the vehicle, it returns to your setting. Um, the My Key, uh, that is what we talked about before. This programs the key fobs. I think this is another redundancy and it sets, oh no, this is something different with driving restrictions to promote safe driving habits. Ah, so you can program a fob or a phone so that let's say your you know 18 year old son has a maximum speed limit of 70 miles an hour or something like that that's cool um you're you're allowed to set restrictions on keys um that's that's definitely cool i'd like to look into that a little bit more and see all the different functions you can do with that um well let me see here if it shows us my key miles no it doesn't have anything right there let me see program key fobs such as seatbelt use, limiting top speeds, decreasing audio volume. Oh God, you don't even get to play your radio loud. I would have hated that if I was a teenager and my parents were like, no, you can only have the audio up to five. Um, that's crazy. But uh, I like the fact that they're thinking about this and promoting safe driving. Uh, okay, let's take a look at this onboard serial uh, modem, serial number. The car has a modem, it has a Wi Fi hotspot. Um, alarm system, the remote set, the remote start setup. Okay. So yep, when you're doing remote start through your um, phone app, not the key fob, um, you can configure here if you want to have the seats and steering wheel heat, heating turned on, how long it runs for, uh, the climate control, you'd set all that in here. Uh, windows, that is okay, remote open, remote close. Um, the, the key fob has uh, the ability to press the key fob and hold the button on it and the, the, you can remotely open the windows. Now, a lot of people disable that because sometimes the key fob is in their pocket and they accidentally press it as they're walking away and the, the windows roll down and uh, they come back and maybe it was raining and the car is soaking wet. Uh, and they just assume like, oh God, this is like phantom car. It did it by itself. But more, more than likely, accidentally you press that button in your pocket and held it in and uh, the windows opened up. And somebody could, you know, break into your car and take stuff if, if that happens also. Um, okay, so the wipers. So yeah, you can set this so that there's a courtesy wipe, one wipe up, rain sensing, the reverse wiper. Okay, the rain sensing is cool. Uh, if you turn that on, if it senses rain, the wipers will come on. You want to turn that off if you go through a car wash, though. Back to the whole car wash thing. Um, otherwise, it's going to go nuts while you're in the car wash. And, you know, one of the things that are spinning around might hit it and rip your wiper off. Make sure you turn that off. Reverse wiper is cool. Um, what that does is if you have your windshield wipers on and you put the vehicle in reverse, the rear wiper will turn on while you're backing up. Uh, that's definitely a good feature to have. Uh, and I, I really don't remember seeing that in any other car. I'm sure it's out there, but not, and I don't remember seeing any of the cars that I've had. Um, the automatic power lift gate, we showed that before. Lighting, um, this is auto high beams, daytime running lights, your welcome lighting and the auto delay. Um, you can set that to different times that you want. Um, the locks, let's see what this is. Uh, auto unlock, uh, miss lock chirp. That's if there's some kind of problem and you you go to lock the vehicle and it doesn't lock. Maybe there's an obstruction in your door jam or something and the lock doesn't connect. It'll beep to remind, to say, hey, there's a, you know, the, we didn't lock up. Uh, walk away lock, that's if, if uh, you have that set when with the key fob or your phone, when you walk away, the vehicle automatically locks. Um, switches inhibited. Oh yeah, that's um, uh, when you're in the vehicle, the uh, other passengers can't use the uh, switches to uh, open windows, I guess. Um, exterior lights feedback. And that is, flashes the exterior lights when you, okay, exactly. So when you lock the vehicle, you get that that flashing uh, acknowledgement that you locked the vehicle. Um, the mirrors are here, auto fold, um, door keypad. There's a keypad in the door. Ford's big on that um, in the B pillar. 
uh, that you can uh, ha use that to automatically unlock the vehicle. Uh, you have this is where you would set up the code for that. So let me close this here. Um, all right, where are we at now? Right here, the mobility kit, to tire mobility kit, um, backup, start, oops, reset canceled. Uh, and what was I resetting? Oh, I held this here. Um, so backup start passcode. That is use a passcode. At least ten numbers. Is it upper create a passcode? Uh, come okay. All right. Um, I, I read backup as like backing up, but no, it's not. It's it, it's a different kind of backup. Um, yeah, that 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 that's um something that most people probably aren't going to need to set, but uh, you would need to. Let me see. If you do need to, this is where you need to do the backup. That's where you need to set the passcode. Uh, okay, show brake coach. Let's take a look. After the vehicle stops, display a message indicating the amount of energy that your vehicle recuperated during. I didn't know it had this. I like that. I, I, I didn't notice that. Um, low battery. So this is when you get, you can set the, uh, when you get a warning. Um, it's currently set at 50 miles. Um, you know, I think, you know, if I, if this was my vehicle, I'd probably set it at 30 miles. I think 50 miles is a little far, but, um, Hey, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I know, I know a lot of people new to electric vehicles want as advanced warning as possible. Um, that's come up a couple times for me. A big display comes up on your driver's display and stays up there, um, right in your face. So it, no, you know that you're running low on, uh, um, on, uh, energy and you got to plug in it sometime soon. Okay, the uh, EV driving history. Um, oh, no, this is just to reset it here. Okay, yeah, that's that's in another screen, um, but you can reset it from here, which is kind of odd because you can reset it there also. Um, let me see. Press and hold to initiate. Oh, emergency tow. We don't want to mess with that. And here's if you want um, uh, kilometers an hour or let me see. Or my, I assume that's where you would change it. Change it for kilometers an hour. And it's a secondary speedometer displaying. Oh, okay. So we don't need to set that to kilometers an hour here. All right, let's take a look at general. All right, language, English, Fahrenheit, miles and miles uh, per kilowatt hour. You can change this to kilometers and kilometers per kilowatt hour or kilometers per 100 kilowatt hour, uh, kilowatt hour uh, uh, no, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Um, that's basically, it shows you how much energy the vehicle is using, whatever you prefer. Most people here in the U.S. use the miles per uh, kilowatt hour. Uh, in Europe, the uh, kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers is a, is a lot more popular. I actually like that better than the miles per kilowatt hour, but whatever you feel most comfortable with. Tire pressures, PSI is what we use here. Uh, intelligent selections. Uh, doesn't even have a... Uh, uh, an example for that. So I'm not 100% sure what it's suggesting, um, but that would be in the owner's manual, which I'm going to show you later where it is. Touch screen, touch screen beep. We, you hear that. Um, about sync, software licenses. Uh, okay. And that's submit feedback. Um, take a look at the display. Uh, and this here, um, you can uh, display off, turns off the screen. Uh, I don't know why anybody want to drive with no screen, but I guess you could um, calm screen switches the display to simplified view of content, turn the screen back or to return to normal view, touch anywhere on the screen. Basically you can, you can set it between display off and calm. Here's your brightness, the instrument cluster. Um, you leave it on auto, you can put it on light or dark. Uh, and what that's going to do is set your driver's display, um, to either be uh, in dark mode or light mode. Most people leave these on auto. And what happens is, you know, at night it turns dark, during the day it, it's light. I kind of like the dark mode, um, it, even 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 during the day, it looks it looks pretty cool. So, um, you know, that's, that's all uh, personal preference. Okay, that's it for that. Now we're gonna take a look really quick up in here. Now, see this little hot key up here with the six little buttons? You can configure that to have a picture on that of whatever you'd like. Um, so you could, you know, have a picture of you and your significant other, your dog, whatever you want. Um, but you can configure that to have a uh, uh, the picture in there. You you do it here in profile. Um, this is where you would pair phones. Um, you put your. This is where the radio is. Uh, if you notice down here, we you've got this list of um, stations that you can preset. 
You can switch between AM, FM, Sirius radio. Um, the Sirius isn't connected to this car. Um, so uh, I was stuck with using FM and, and AM this week. Oh, the horror. Um, but uh, you can see these presets here. You can have up to six rows of presets. Right now it's only set to have three rows of presets. I think we're gonna probably go to that down here um, and show you where you would set that up. Um, so let's take a look here one second. Um, well, let's take a look at this next EV charge. Now it pulled up the uh, navigation system and it should be pulling up charging stations. Okay, yeah, here's a list of charging stations that are nearby. Um, and, uh, you know, it tells you what direction and, and um, uh, how far they are. So if you wanted to use one of these, uh, a lot of them, a lot of, not all the times, uh, a lot of times it tells you what the vehicle is. Like this is a D DC fast charge, but on the Ford Pass app, that you use that's much more descriptive than this. You'd use your Ford Pass app and it tells you the list of all these charging stations. And it also tells you um, whether to DC fast charge level two and the power. And it even tells you how uh, many of the stations are currently available and how many are currently in use. So that's good for that. Let's take a look. Uh, this is the dynamic parking. We talked a little bit about that before. We're not gonna be doing uh, the parking here, but that's pretty much what where you would um, uh, do it right now it's going to say there's there's no parking available here because we're in my garage um, but uh, that's where you would you would use that the radio the phone pairing okay let me see here navigation navigation system works really well and one of the things that it does really cool is it will route you to charging stations if you select a destination that's too far so let's say we're we want to go to Femway Park Fenway Park in Boston. Now that's further than a, um, this can make it on a one charge uh, because it's, uh, you know, almost 300 miles. So at highway speeds, even though this has a range that's about that, what, it, what, what the system will do is route you to charging stations on the way. Um, if you hit um, the, the, see it says EV chargers being added to the trip. Alert and use voice so let me zoom all the way out. Please drive to highlighted route. Yeah, okay. Let me do this here. See right here. Now that's Fenway Park. Here's where we are here. And right about here in Hartford, Connecticut, um, it was gonna it's taking us to an Electrify America charging station in uh, at Walmart. So and it's saying that um, we only have to stop for 10 minutes. And we'll get up to 41% and that'll be enough to get us to uh, Fenway Park. So, you know, simple 10 minute stop uh, because the Mustang Mach-E does charge at a high rate. That's all we need to get up to uh, Fenway Park and watch the uh, Red Sox beat the Yankees. <laughs> all right, let's go back here. Uh, well, first, let's cancel out of this. So I know this extends it if you want to have a bigger view. You still have the tiles down here. But um, you know you have a bigger view for your, for your nav for your nav system. There we go. And now we're closed out of navigation. Okay, so that was navigation. Tire pressure, obviously, that's your um, tire pressure. It shows you all four uh, wheels, 37 all across. Okay, and trips. This shows your recent trips, trip one here, um, and it tells you where did where did your energy go? Um, Seven percent went to climate use, eighty-two um, percent for was for driving, four percent was accessories, and seven percent lost because of external temperature. Um, it was cold some mornings, so I guess that 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 that's one of the problems when you have uh, colder weather, you lose some of your energy um, for external temperature. Um, but uh, this was, I averaged 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, it was 19 hours. I mean, this was uh, not one drive, it was multiple days. I didn't reset the trip that much. Let's see what trip two is. Now this is probably um, nearly the whole time the car only has 6,000 miles on it. So um, over the entire course of this car being in the press pool and driven by many different uh, drivers, it's averaged 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour, not bad. Um, and uh, 81% of the energy was used for propulsion and the rest was, as you can see, for climate use and accessories and so forth. 
So that's not bad considering, you know, the journalists, the media, when we get the cars, we, we typically drive them hard. We want to see how well they do. Um, and to have it at average over three miles per kilowatt hour in, you know, March and April, where it's not really that warm out yet, um, that's not bad at all. Okay, that was trips. Owner's manual. There's a full digital owner's manual on here. Um, it really has good. Oh, why did I pull that back up? One second. Owner's manual. There we go. So, and I will have to point out that this is a pre-production car. It's it's a, a Ford Press Fleet. So I was warned that the software might not be a hundred percent production. So that could have been a glitch. That was from that. Um, so yeah, you can you can view the entire owner's manual here. They even have videos um, and uh, visual search where you know you can you can um, look at the different options you want to see. Oh, this is the screen here. That's what we're doing now. Um, you know you can you can you you can get all the information right from here. And uh, the instructional videos I was looking at, I'm not going to pull them up now, are really cool also. And uh, the fact that you get them on this beautiful you know 15.5 inch display screen. Um, is really nice. Uh, you know, if you're sitting waiting to charge or something, it's not a bad idea to pull that thing up and you'll probably learn something about the car that you, that you didn't realize. Here's your Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Um, I actually synced to Android Auto uh, a few days ago and worked really well, super easy, just, just as, as, as you know, it is in most vehicles. It is um, wireless. Uh, some, sometimes vehicles, you actually have physical connection. Here on the Mustang Mach-E, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, do sync wirelessly, and this is where you would, um, you know, navigate your Bluetooth uh, audio. Coming down on the bottom, let's flip this thing up now, go to the main screen. Coming down to the bottom uh, is your uh, heating and uh, climate control. Uh, on the side here, let's say I want to get some more heat. I can get it warmer. I can go down and get colder. You can also use these buttons here. Um, and one cool feature is, um, let's say you're driving and you know, it's hard to keep your finger on this. Let's say you stray off, look at this, it still goes up and down. Um, so, you know, you don't have to keep your eyes on the uh, screen when you're driving. Uh, it does the same thing for the other side. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, down here, that's heated steering wheel, works really well. Heated seats, there's three different settings um, right here. Turn those off before I start toasting myself. This is the fan settings here. Um, you could also set it for auto, and there's three different settings for auto. You can have uh, the low fan speed, or the hot, or me medium, or high fan speed. And then what you also have over here is um, this is to turn the entire system off. You don't want any uh, heating or cooling. Uh, you press this button on the bottom here, and it's dual where they're both synced in. Once I make my side a little bit warmer. Uh, or they make their side cool, cooler. Now it's different. If you want to go back to having it the same, you know, you you you, you press the dual and it resets. Um, another thing you'll notice here is this is where you want you can have your defrosters. Um, if you want the 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 um, the heating and cooling coming out through the vents here, you can show them there, and it shows uh, the center console is where the uh, the rear gets, and then the um, the for your feet is right down here. Turn those off. Now I know this says E heat. It's a little confusing. Um, that's just a regular heat because, uh, you know, electric vehicles don't have, oh, electric vehicles don't have, uh, you know, waste heat from their uh, combustion motor. Um, so Ford's calling it E heat. It's just basic, you know, it is a resistive heating system. The Mustang Mach-E doesn't have a heat pump system. So, um, but uh, if, you, if you want the heat, you have to turn that on there. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to get warm. All right. Come down here. Now, you will notice this big button here for the radio. The only thing this does is the volume for the radio. Nothing else. Um, when I first saw the pictures of the Mach-E, I figured it might have a different functions depending on what you're doing. It doesn't. It's just a volume button. So, um, you know, for people that need that tactile feeling and, um, you know, don't want to just use the volume button on the steering wheel. There you go. You got your big button down there. And I guess it's for the passenger too. If the passenger wants to reach over, you don't want the passenger grabbing your, your steering wheel to, uh, to change anything over here. You've got, you know, your max defrost, um, the rear window defroster and the heated seats for this side. All right, let me turn all this off again, because it's going to get super loud. 
All right. I think that's it. Um, so much to go over. Uh, I hope I caught everything. Um, these tiles here, I don't know if I mentioned, um, you don't really configure these. I mean, you, you can, um, uh, ch change them. You could say, I don't need to see the, the, this anymore, but what it does is it brings up the most recent things that you've looked at. I looked at the tire pressure, the navigation system. We were looking at the uh, trip odometer before, um, uh, there's no foam paired. Uh, so, so this is these tiles down here pretty much just display what you were looking at most recently. And if you don't want it on there, as I said, you just pull it off and then it pulls over. We were looking at the owner's manual. It pulls that up. Um, I hope that uh, that was informative. I uh, hope we got everything. There's so much in here. I probably missed something, um, but uh, we'll go over it now. If it looks like I missed anything, maybe I'll tack that on to the end of the video. But uh, for now, listen, thanks for watching. We hope you learned something. Mustang Mach-E Sync 4 system. This is a lot to take in. It's a really good system. You also, I'm sure you noticed, it's pretty snappy and responsive. A lot of these systems are laggy in, in many of the new cars. And um, a lot of them get criticized for that. But this seems very responsive. I think Ford, you know, must have spent a lot of time working on this because the system um, is nice and bright and clear and as responsive as any of the new systems that I've seen, you know, in, in pretty much any of the manufacturers. Uh, Ford did a good job with this. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on Inside EVs.